I've been reading about a subject called third man syndrome, a reported phenomenon in which spiritual presences are said to provide much needed help at important times. According to a book by the same name by John Geiger, a remarkable story came out of Korea when in 1995, the survivor of a building collapse spent 16 days below the rubble in a position that didn't even allow one to sit up straight. When rescued, the survivor said that a mysterious monk gave them an apple, sustenance that kept their hope of rescue alive. World War II provided an opportunity for British neurologist Macdonald Critchley to study 279 sailors and airmen who ran into dire straits. And in his 1943 study, he described what he called bioscopic fantasies, instances in which people's lives flash before their eyes. This led to further descriptions of the presence of guardian angels. Even Charles Lindbergh noticed some strange activity 19 hours into his historic flight around the world. Ghostly figures started forming beside him with a distinct sense of not journeying alone. He said, I've never believed in apparitions, but how can I explain the forms I carried with me through so many hours of this day? He went on to describe it as transparent forms in human outline, voices that spoke with authority and clearness. For thousands of years, people have gone into the wilderness alone for spiritual pilgrimages, to have visions and epiphanies, journey quests, visions induced often by hunger, thirst, illness, or physical strain. And when these conditions are met outside of ritual, religious experiences are often reported. A really interesting study came out in 1967 out of the American Journal of Psychiatry, in which a mining disaster in Pennsylvania saw two miners who were trapped both have religious experiences in which they saw images of, of a Pope. One was Catholic, one wasn't, but both seemed to share this shared experience. And it allowed them to have a sense of comfort in knowing they were going to be rescued. Mining disasters have inadvertently drawn parallels to the monks who went into such caves for mystical purposes. Darkness for extended times has always facilitated altered states of consciousness. Joshua Slocum encountered a phantom sailor during his attempt to complete the first solo circumnavigation of the world. And that is pretty strange considering that was in the seas, not even underground. Something about being alone created this environment in which he was visited by a ghost that claimed to be from the vessel the Pinta, a vessel that sailed about 400 years prior to this incident. The stranger provided assistance, gave advice, and helped him through an illness. This stranger even stayed on the vessel until the next day. There's an idea of angels that's ingrained in Western culture, these winged beings that are shown in paintings protecting babies and children. But these are just symbols that communicate that when mankind is at its most vulnerable, divine intervention is needed most. So it's no surprise that in the trenches of war, under deep fatigue and shell shock, people might report feeling unexplained comfort as a sort of coping mechanism. But the evidence, as this book suggests, indicates something more universal, meaningful, and at least sometimes unexplained.